Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are working on Romeo and Juliet and today we get to hear from Mercutio in Act 2, Scene 1. So Mercutio and Romeo and Benvolio and a whole bunch of other people were at a party at the Capulet's place. The fun thing being Romeo and his crew were not really invited to said party at the Capulet's place. Um, but at this party, Romeo saw Juliet and instantly fell in love. She saw him and instantly fell in love. And then they found out that they were from warring families and they're both kind of like, oh crap. But then the party winds down and comes to an end and Lord Capulet is basically like, you know, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here, kicks everybody out. And then we had the prologue to act two yesterday, which was basically just telling us all the stuff that we know but saying there is still hope for these two young whippersnappers. So we start out act two, scene one. Romeo like goes out, but then stays on the grounds because he can't force himself to leave because Juliet's there and he wants to be near Juliet still. But then he hears Mercutio and Benvolio coming and he kind of hides. And Mercutio and Benvolio are like, where is Romeo? Like he has to be around here somewhere because we kind of saw him leave, but I swear he jumped over this wall into this orchard, so he's still here. And Mercutio, trying to find him, says, Romeo, humors, madmen, passion, lover, appear thou in the likeness of a sigh. Speak but one rhyme, and I am satisfied. Cry me but, I, me, provant, but love and day. Speak to my gossip Venus one fair word, one nickname for her purblind son and her, young Abraham Cupid, he that shot so true when King Cafetia loved the beggar maid. He heareth not. He stirreth not. He moveth not. The ape is dead. I must conjure him. I conjure thee by Rosalind's bright eyes, by her high forehead and her scarlet lip, by her fine foot, straight leg, and quivering thigh, and the demeans that there adjacent lie, that in thy likeness thou appear to us. So basically Mercutio is being flowery and dramatic. He starts out just shouting for Romeo, trying to call to him and, and to entice him to show himself, to come near, to, you know, let them know where he is, that kind of thing. And when that isn't working, he's like, okay, uh, like, I'll, I'll, I'll mention Rosalind's name and her description and that will make him show up because obviously he still wants to see her. But Romeo continues to hide through this whole thing and Benvolio and Mercutio have a few more little back and forths where they're like, well, he's not coming. Maybe we should try this to get him to come. Maybe this will work, blah, 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 until finally Benvolio just gets kind of tired of it and he's like, yeah, he's he's not coming. Let's let's go home. And Mercutio's like, yeah, the ground is too cold, too cold and hard for me, so let's... Let's just get out of here. Let's go home and go to bed. And they leave. And that is the end of Act 2, Scene 1. So we will stop there for today. And we will pick up tomorrow to find out what Romeo does once he's in this orchard. Was it worth, was it worth breaking and entering? We'll find out. I'll see you tomorrow for more.